Hey everybody, this is Lonnie. So we're getting started on this real-time dashboard using Angular and OSIsoft PyWeb API. So the first thing we need to do is get a base application started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up Visual Studio and we're gonna fire up a new project. I'm gonna call this uh, dashboard. And um, this is going to be an ASP.NET web application. And we want to create just an empty, empty, empty application because we're really going to build this just from the ground up. I'm going to try to minimize the amount of extra stuff that we need that we're bringing in, um, just to try to keep the project as simple as possible, but still be meaningful. So um, I'm going to check the web API here because we're going to actually create our own custom API, and you'll see the um, the benefits of doing that as we go forward. So once the application is created, I just want to do a quick, I want to fire it up, make, make sure that everything is working. And it looks like I'm getting another error here. Hmm. Let me try this. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and try to fire this up, make sure that everything's working okay. And, uh, so the reason that we have this is because we really don't have uh, any kind of uh, page to navigate to. So we'll go ahead and stop the application and I want to create a, um, I want to add a new file here and we're going to just uh, add in a simple HTML file and this will be our landing page. And so uh, typically an index HTML is a pretty, pretty good uh, default page that most people use and we'll just say hello world just to make sure that this works. I'm going to go ahead and press F5, fire it up and we'll see if this comes up okay. Okay that's great. We got our hello world and everything looks good in our development environment. Um, so let's go ahead and come back over to Visual Studio and the first thing I want to do is I want to bring in all of our libraries. And uh, to do that, we want to uh, we want to add add them in through NuGet. If you if you do a search up here and you look for project uh, NuGet uh, packages, this will bring up the manager, and we want to bring in um, all of our libraries that we're going to need. So uh, the first one that we want to use is we want to use Bootstrap, and this is uh, this is going to be all the styling and that kind of stuff. So let me get over to browse here and we're going to install uh, bootstrap and uh, and then we want to do our angular components will be the next the next thing so I'll just do a um, uh, I'll do a search for angular here and we want to bring in angular core and uh, that'll have all the all the really all the good angular stuff that, that everybody uh, loves to use. And then angular route, we want to bring that in also because we're going to do a little bit of routing. Uh, every application that I've ever created has some kind of routing, so we might as well deal with that. Um, and then the last thing I want to bring in is angular sanitize. And angular sanitize is basically a way to keep your application more secure and it's going to be required for our um, charting component that I'm going to bring in next. Um, the, uh, so the charting component that we're going to use is, is uh, by DevExpress, it's called DevExtreme. And um, what I want to do is I want to bring in the, um, the, the, uh, the DevExtreme.web, but I'm going to drop it down a version to, um, to 15.2. Um, I've been having problems with the latest one with, uh, with a... Um, with some of the um, supporting libraries around uh, globalize.js. So we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll bring in um, the one that I know will work okay for us. Now, um, this, this uh, charting tool is a product that you have to pay for if you want to use it in a, in a real life application. And it's actually not that expensive. Um, I think one developer license is a few hundred dollars. And, uh, and um, for what you get, uh, it's well worth using a commercial product like this. I really like this one. There's, uh, there's some other ones that are really um, kind of, uh, that are commonly used also like with uh, Kindo 
UI and those are, are also really popular um, that I know a lot of other developers use too. So, um, you know, if you're if you're gonna do get really get serious about dashboarding, you may want to look at a commercial commercial product because it could speed up your development time. Um, so um, with that, we we brought in um, all of our libraries and most of the stuff that we brought in is located here under the scripts. And uh, you can see there's Angular and we have jQuery, which came in when we brought in Bootstrap. And then um, we also have our uh, Dev, Dev Express, Dev Extreme, uh, Chart.js in here. And uh, so, so we've got, we've got, uh, we've got our uh, libraries in. Now what I want to do is I want to set up this index.html file so that we can take advantage of all those libraries. There's a couple of things we need to do. One is we need to bring in our styling, which is the CSS files. And the other one is we need to bring in the scripts, the script files. Now, if you haven't done any HTML programming, don't worry about it. Uh, this really is, is, pretty, is, is pretty easy stuff to learn, a little bit of a learning curve, but we're gonna go through it here and, um, and I'll show you what, what's involved in bringing in our, our styles and our content. So under the um, content area, this is where this, the .css files ended up. And um, what we want to do is we want to bring in uh, we want to bring in the stuff for Bootstrap, and we also want to bring in the things for our chart uh, for our chart uh, control. The Bootstrap CSS file or the CSS files in general go in this header section, and we can just drag it over. And I'm going to do the min files because they're a little smaller, and it'll uh, allow our application to work a little faster min files are minified they're just they just get rid of all the white space that you would use if you're um, actually design, uh, writing uh, a CSS file so we'll bring in that one and um, I also want to bring in a couple of our uh, of our um, DX ones I want to bring in the um, DX light and I want to bring in the uh, the um, DX common up here those are for our chart control and down here, this is the area where our scripts are going to go in. And so I'm gonna bring in the scripts. And the first one that I always like to bring in and put at the top is the jQuery strip, script. So I'll put that one right here at the very top. And uh, then um, we'll bring in our other, our other main ones, which is going to be the uh, Angular ones. And so we'll bring in Angular and we'll bring in the Angular route. Um, and then we can, um, bring in the uh, Angular Sanitize, which we're going to need because of that charting control. And then, um, and then we're going to bring in the Bootstrap uh, stuff. There's a, a JavaScript library associated with Bootstrap. And, uh, and then we want to bring in um, the last couple of things to, that are going to allow our chart control to work. And one is going to be, let me close out this content area, and we're going to go into uh, Globalize here. And I want to bring in globalize, and then I want to bring in my my um, chart control right here. This guy. Just let me get back to the index page, and we'll bring in this one. Okay. And one last one is I need to bring in this uh, this uh, web application also. This uh, web application JS for our for our chart control. So so these last uh, these last three here are all about the chart control. So once we have all of that, we can go ahead and we can try to just fire that up and make sure that everything works again. So uh, one of the things that uh, you should get used to doing when you're in a browser like this and you wanna uh, check to see if you have any errors is I can pr press F12 here and when, um, when things load up, what we, if, if there's any problems with our application, like if we had reference problems or things like that and the libraries weren't loading in properly, we would start seeing errors show up here in the console log. At some point in the project, we'll probably see those. But this is uh, using Chrome, and the other browsers also have a way for debugging, but this is the, this is the one that I use, I'm, I'm used to using. So there's the base application, and um, so the next thing we're going to do now that we've got that build is we're actually going to start bringing in some HTML stuff and get our uh, dashboard all set up in the next uh, in the next uh, uh, part. Okay. So I'm Lonnie. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Bye bye.